strikes me of all of the various Basically. indignities that are visited on the players, mm -hmm. the most outrageous is the lack of guaranteed contracts. Yes. Right. And it strikes me that that's an argument that you can make with the American public, with the fans, real easily, just, just to say a football player, like every other person in America, deserves to have a real contract. Okay. Well, also, it's, right? the it's, it's the most violent sport of all the well, professional right, but, sports. But these are all great arguments. So let's play it out. Yeah. You're an owner. Yeah. You and you're sitting with me at the negotiation table, which would be fantastic, by the way. You say to We're you, available. you say We're to you, and I'm going to turn, I'm gonna I turn nothing, you. I got hey, look, going That's on. great. That's some <laughs> of the greatest comedy that that we will ever have. But <laughs> let's pretend that you're an owner. We've made these wonderful arguments, and you say no. Yeah. Now what? Are fans going to watch tomorrow if our contracts are not guaranteed? Of course they will. Right. After the owner says no to guaranteed contracts, the real question then is, what next? The thing I don't understand is that there are three people in this room, owners, players, and broadcasters. And mm -hmm. I never hear people the talk networks. about the broadcasters. They're the, one who, the ones who have the real power here. They're writing the checks. And you would assume that because they're showing the games and they need the players to play the game, they're on your side. they would be on our side. I'm telling you that it is a fact and a federal judge found that the league illegally conspired against the players and were able to get four billion dollars from the networks even if they weren't going to be showing the games. So now that four billion dollars that you think should be on the player's side is now on whose side? The owner's.